الجلسة التفاعلية للمؤتمر تحت عنوان مقهى المعرفة نوليدج كافي وبنناقش من خلال هذه الجلسة دور تداول المحادثات داخل مؤسساتنا يرأس هذه الجلسة مستر ديفيد جورتن مؤسس جمعية جورتن للمعرفة في بريطانيا Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. Welcome back. So as you see, the, uh, the room has been transformed in the, uh, during the coffee break. So now we're going to do something a little bit different. What I want to do is start by telling you a story. I want to tell you the story of the Knowledge Cafe. I'm going back eight years now to September 2002. I used to regularly go up to London to attend some knowledge management seminars. They were run by the City University Business School. They were run in the evening. Um, we spent uh, maybe an hour in the presentation. And in true British tradition, we would go to the pub afterwards for a few drinks. Now, some of those talks were excellent. They were extremely good talks. Others, though, were what I call death by PowerPoint. Are you familiar with those? Chalk and talk. Recently, I heard someone refer to them as sit and git. The speaker would have 178 PowerPoint slides, and they would insist on showing every single one. And even when the cleaner was sweeping up around their feet, they would continue to talk. Now, on those occasions, what do you think was the best part of the evening? Anyone? <laughs> it was the pub. It was the conversations afterwards that were the best part of the evening. And to me, that was where the real learning was taking place. It was in the engagement with the topic. Rather than sitting there, going to sleep, or thinking about maybe what you were doing that evening or the following day, because we all do it, we all drift off when uh, you know, we have a presentation like that. But when we're engaged in conversation, when we're talking to each other, when we start to get passionate about the topic, then that's where the real learning is taking place. And given that these speakers were talking about knowledge management, they were talking about learning and education, it seemed to me that they weren't walking the talk. So that was where the original idea for the Knowledge Cafe came about. What I wanted to do was run similar events in London where the speaker only spoke for maybe five or ten minutes, posed a question to the audience, and then let the audience have conversations amongst themselves in a similar way to the way that you know, we'd have a conversation um, over a coffee. So that was, the, that was the birth of the idea for the cafe. But there were other, um, other inputs to my thinking around the cafe as well. And let me just share some of those with you. I'm pressing the wrong button. This is a quotation from a gentleman called David Weinberger and from a book called The Clue Train Manifesto from about the year 2000 where he says that business is a conversation because as knowledge workers, that's actually our job. As knowledge workers, our job is to have interesting conversations. Now, I read that 10 years ago and it made a big impact on me because I never thought about conversation in that light before. This is what um, Nancy Dixon says about conversation. I'm going to need to put my glasses on to, re to remember the exact quote. She says that our most effective KM tool is conversation. Now you may not agree with that, but think about it. You know, what is the most effective KM tool that we have at our disposal? It may well be a function of what we're trying to do. But, you know, 
Conversation probably isn't one of the tools that came to mind. And this gentleman, Theodore Zeldin, he's an Oxford historian. Um, I've met him a few times. He is actually as crazy as he looks, that mass of white hair. He runs things called conversation dinners, where he brings strangers together to have conversations around dinner. He not only gives people um, a dinner menu, he gives them a conversation menu. So they can choose their starter and they can choose their conversation at the same time. Last year it was his 76th birthday and in London he had um, a birthday party in Regent's Park where he invited people along. It was called the Festival of Strangers. He says, come along and have a conversation with a stranger. And he paired them up and they went for a walk in the park and they had conversations with each other. As I say, he's a little bit crazy, but I kind of like that, uh, that form of craziness. And he wrote a book, again about the year 2000, um, simply called Conversation. And this is what he says in the book, that conversation is a meeting of, ha a meeting of minds with different memories and habits. And that when two minds meet, they don't just exchange facts, they transform them, reshape them, draw different implications from them, and engage in new trains of thought. Conversation doesn't just shuffle the cards, conversation creates new cards. Now I just love his words, he's a little bit of a poet. If you think about what he's saying here, you're, you're all listening to me now. Every single one of you is making a different sense of what I'm saying. I'm not you know, conveying perfect knowledge to you. I'm doing what he says here. You know, you're, you're transforming what I'm saying. You're engaging in new trains of thought. And what he's saying is that conversation is fundamentally creative. This is, uh, this is what it's about. And... Uh, This with me. Um, coming back to the Clue Train Manifesto and David Weinberger a little bit further in the book he says this about knowledge that for all our knowledge we actually have no idea what we're talking about now, you might not agree with that <laughs> I think a lot of us probably think that we know what we're talking about but maybe other people don't but it's, uh, it had me um, laughing at the time. He says we don't understand what's going on in our business, our market, or our world. But this was the key thing for me. He said, knowledge management shouldn't be about helping us to know more. It should be about helping us to understand better. And that was the key insight for me at the time. That knowledge management is more about understanding than shoveling more and more information at us. If you think about it, with the birth of the internet, you know, the World Wide Web, um, Google, Wikipedia, we've got unprecedented access to information and knowledge this last 10, 15 years. Are we that much more um, capable? Are we, are we that much more effective at doing our jobs? Are we that much more creative? You could argue that we're not. We could actually argue that it's actually in, you know, hindered um, creativity and uh, our effectiveness. But what David Weinberger goes on to say is, you know, as human beings, how do we get to understand things? And he says, fundamentally, we get to understand things through storytelling, through conversation. He's not talking about long, elaborate stories. He's talking about the little anecdotal stories that we tell each other when we're engaged in conversation. So, you know, this was me going back 10 years or so, eight, 10 years, thinking about the Knowledge Cafe, thinking about knowledge management, thinking about the role of conversation in our business lives. Now, Theodore again, again from his book, he says this, about conversation, that the kind of conversation that he's interested in is the one in which we start 
with a willingness to emerge a slightly different person. He's talking about dialogue. He's talking about a learning conversation. He's not talking about debate. He's not talking about argument. He's talking about a conversation where we're willing to listen and see the other person's point of view, even if we don't necessarily agree with it. So we're looking at, uh, we're looking at learning here through, through conversation. And I don't have time to go into this now, but you know, here are a few of the principles of dialogue. And uh, I think probably one of the ones I appreciate here the most is, um, is the third one. Welcome differences and explore them. So when I'm having a conversation with somebody, when they say something that maybe I thoroughly disagree with, rather than get into debate, rather than get into argument, rather than try to convince them that my way is right and they're wrong, it makes sense, especially if there's somebody you know, who, who you know has got a good education, a good background, somebody who you respect, to actually ask the question of yourself, why do they see things differently? Is it because you know, I'm wrong and they're right? Is it that maybe you know, they come from a different culture, they've had a different education, they work in a different industry, maybe it's just that they've got a different perspective because of those reasons. Now at the end of the day, again, you don't necessarily have to agree with them. But it makes sense to take the time to understand them and to understand that different perspective. Especially if within your organization you are going to have to work with them. Then when they do something that you don't agree with, you at the very least know why they made that decision. Or you stand a better chance of understanding why they made that decision. So again, you know, conversations about building relationships, you know, relationships based on, on understanding. So what I've tried to convey in these last few minutes is a few things. Business is a conversation, and that conversation is a very powerful learning and knowledge management tool, something that we probably don't think about because we take conversation for granted. Conversation doesn't just shuffle the cards, conversation creates new cards. Theodore Zaldin. Conversation is fundamentally creative. And then understanding is more important than knowing. And how do we get to better understand the world? It's through conversation. It's through storytelling. That's, that's how we get to better understand the world. So this is just way of a little sort of introduction to my thinking about conversation and the, uh, and the cafe. Now what I want to do now is quite simply explain the cafe process um, really as quickly and as simply as I can and then we're going to actually run a knowledge cafe. So the way I typically run the cafes is effectively as a replacement if you like for a traditional death by PowerPoint presentation. But I've given you, I've given you a mini one already. And typically I'll find a speaker who will speak literally for five or ten minutes about a topic. We may be set up in a room something like this. It works best with smaller groups and smaller tables, but this, this still works fine. So I have people sitting in groups um, of at least, at, least, at least four people, typically at round tables. I pose the question, or the speaker poses the question. People have a conversation at their tables. And then after 10 minutes or so, I ask people to change tables. I simply say, could a few people from each table move to another table? So people move to different tables and continue the conversation around the same question. So I make that, that change twice. So we have three different conversations. And then I bring everyone back together to have a whole group conversation. Now there's a few things here that are a little bit different to maybe a traditional workshop. Let me just put up the next slide. And let's just go through these. What I'm trying to do with the cafe is to create a relaxed environment for sort of informal conversation like you would have um, over coffee. I don't want to force anyone to do anything. As far as I'm concerned in the cafe, Everyone is equal. So I don't have table leaders. I'm not going to try to appoint a table leader. 
I don't want anyone standing up and reporting back unless they actually want to. Um, I can't do it here because we're too large, but with smaller groups, what I do in the whole group conversation at the end is get everyone to pull their chairs into a circle and we actually have a conversation in a circle. I've done that for as many as 40 people and it works very well. Um, I also don't try to summarize in any way. What I say about the cafes is that what people take away is what they take away in their heads. It's again, you know, I'm trying to replace the traditional, uh, the traditional presentation. And there you don't usually tend to summarize. People take away um, what, they, you know, what they've learned actually in their heads. So I don't try to capture things on flip charts. Um, I don't try to summarize in any way. If you want to take personal notes, that's fine. But it's all about what you learn as individuals and take away as, uh, as individuals. So that's where we're at. Let's, uh, let's actually run the cafe. Now the one thing we need to do before we start is we just need, I think, really four people per table as a minimum. So maybe this table here could merge with this table here. Would you mind doing that? So could you guys move from this table to this one? And then I think we've got... Well, what I find with the cafe, if, if, if there's three people or less at a table, it doesn't work so well. So what I'm going to do now is give you about some... Um, 10 minutes to have a conversation and then we're going to go through two changes and we're going to come back together and we can share things. Um, in this case, we're going to have to use, uh, use the microphones. So here's, uh, here's your question. So you, you've heard what I've just had to say about conversation and its role. So my question to you is what is the role of conversation in organizations and how important is it in the sharing of knowledge? So just how important do you think conversation is? Now, is it really that important? Is it, as Nancy Dixon thinks, one of the most powerful knowledge management tools that we have? Or is it, is it a waste of time? Is talking a waste of time? Okay? So let me pass over to you now. In about 10 minutes' time, we'll change tables, we'll do that twice, and then we'll come back together. Okay?
have your attention please? Can I have your attention? What I would like now is just for two or three people from each table to move to another table and continue the conversation. Okay?
It's, it's always difficult trying to stop the conversation. Right, once again, could, say, three people from each table move to another table? This is the last, this is the last of the changes. So could three people from each table please move to another table and then continue the conversation? Okay everyone, once again, can I have your attention? Okay, this, this time for a moment I need your undivided attention. <laughs> I always feel bad in the cafes when I, I say I need to, you know, I've got to interrupt the conversation because everyone's sort of engaged, everyone's deep in their conversation and I realise I'm often breaking into the conversation at a critical point. But what we're going to do now as I say, normally if the cafe was smaller, you know, we, you could have a conversation in a circle. Or if it was just these four tables, it's quite easy to have a whole group conversation. But because we're so large, we've got three microphones. I've got a microphone here, and we've got two microphones at the back here. What we'll do is pass the microphones around, but just to people who have something to say. So if you don't want to say anything in the whole group, that's perfectly okay. Now what I'm looking for is simply for people to share their insights. So it, it could be a personal insight that you've had from the conversation. It could be that you, that you want to share something 
that you discussed at one of the tables or a common theme between the tables or maybe you want to ask a question to the room or a question to me so it's not about reporting back to me you know, almost pretend that I'm not here to some, to some degree unless you want to direct, you know, directly um, ask a question of me it's really much more about sharing your thoughts and ideas amongst the room yeah? it's a little bit different to maybe workshops where you stand up and you give a formal little report to the, uh, to the facilitator it's, it's, it's quite different so <coughs> where, where, where are the other two microphones? there's one here and there's one where's the other microphone? and there's one here okay so who would uh, who would like to continue the conversation? This lady here. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting uh, way of uh, uh, sharing the, the, the speech and knowledge. Actually, I have been sitting with some of my colleagues here, and the, the two themes that we were worrying about are, uh, are first the accuracy of the data, because data leads to information leads to knowledge so if the data basically is not correct then the knowledge management will fail this is number one number two how can we apply knowledge management in its positive way in an organization like the IDSC when sometimes we don't know one another or we have duplication of work so we want to we were sharing this together and see how can we have a successful application of the conference in our own organization. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Other thoughts or insights or, or indeed comments on, uh, on, on those last thoughts? Somebody over here. We were talking about uh, sharing and uh, sharing the information. Uh, what the difference between sharing? Uh, and you know, when you share the information, uh, this is should be in society level or uh, business level. Yani. but I, I was believe uh, I was believe that uh, sharing the information is it should be. Uh, yani we have differentiate yani, between uh, on business and social level. Yani. because on business we can uh, sharing the information and integrate it by, uh, while thinking and brainstorming uh, on the business environment it's uh, not matter uh, to, to think about social we, I respect the social but it's have limited time in the morning uh, you, when you saw your friend, uh, your colleagues you, you follow up with them but regarding to the accurate of, um, of the information uh, professor talking about I think uh, sometimes yeah, it's the most some t people try to pass a message uh, on a wrong way to get something and make another decision and you go highway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I think that's an interesting issue actually is the difference between if you like social chit chat and, and having conversation ar around the business. Um, and getting that balance right. Hello everyone. Um, I would like to share you two ideas that I got out of this um, nice um, cafe. First, um, um, what can I say? The conversation is so, so important to get together a human be as a human being. And two examples that I, show, that I saw today is um, the coffee break. So, conference coffee breaks is, are a great way to um, just exchange uh, experience and get to know new people. And this cafe is so a great tool to the knowledge management because when I was talking to people and start to meld with them, um, I felt like it's so, so good. And um, another thing that we need in our families is sometimes the, the, the games and Game Boys and all the small devices that kids are playing at home reduce um, the conversation and the family bond so I think if, if I am a parent of kids and I have to stop my kids from playing these things so, um, so we'll have more t 
time with them to talk and speak and maybe yes <laughs> thank you thank you over here We talked about uh, in um, uh, a research institute that the, the results of the research is published to uh, a limited audience or is targeted to a limited audience. But if we go into uh, conversation with uh, for informal conversation with other uh, groups and with the general public, we probably will be able to use. Uh, the, the results of, these, of that research in a much better way or at least to increase awareness of the possibility of solutions to some of our problems. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we all agree the conversation is very positive and it's a way to share knowledge and, and knowledge is power and, and power is an worth anything if it's only with you alone. Um, you need to share it. I think what's important to encourage conversation as well, which is something that you have done, is first of all to create a safe environment so people feel relaxed um, and that they're able to express their views. Secondly, to not necessarily place any obligations on them that they have to report back so then people th are too concerned with about what they're going to say later on than what they're actually saying now. Um, having said that, Moderation, I think, is always key, and, and too little conversation isn't productive, and too much conversation isn't productive. And I think that uh, I speak for many people that oftentimes we find ourselves in a situation where we brainstorm and everybody has fantastic ideas and we sit and chat a lot and we talk a lot and then everybody goes home and nobody actually acts upon anything, which is what was said. Nobody is motivating anyone else to take action. So I think that's really important. It's similar to what Elvis Presley said, a little less conversation, a little more action. Thank you. Can I just can I just comment on that? I, th I think you're absolutely right about the action piece, um, and I run the cafes in all sorts of different ways. And often, when I'm doing it within organisations with a smaller group, remember I told you I actually create that circle. The, the very last thing I do, and this is the only time I put people on the spot, I go around the circle and I ask each person to share an action something that they're going to do differently, something they're going to almost commit to do differently um, as a result of the cafe. Now there's no guarantee that they will do it, but at least I've put the seed in their mind that this isn't just about conversation, this is about action. Because you're absolutely right, if, we, if you have a great conversation and you don't change, or you don't do something different, there's probably no real learning that's taken place and there's going to be no um, change or difference you know, take place in the organisation. So, you know, clearly, I always think that you know, the sort of conversation leads to understanding and understanding leads to action um, is, is one way of looking at it. But anyway, more thoughts? Yeah. <coughs> Hello, everybody. I would like to share uh, part of what people converse and it's a very important point, what we talk about. There are, uh, as you just said, that there is negative conversation, there is positive conversation. When we were in one of the tables, we were just conversing that in one of the organization, each time they converse, they converse about backbiting, salary, who takes much more than me, and so on. This is very ruining, this is very ruining to our own energy, our own positive energy, wasting time, it does not do any good. I, I would definitely encourage not to do those things <clears throat> and would rather focus about ourselves. I think one of our presentations today we have found a quote like, why does everyone uh, want um, change in the world? Just change ourselves. So the most important thing that we change ourselves and focus and converse about what will benefit us. So I, I believe there are two kinds of conversation, the positive ones. One, that we will chat about our families and our uh, friends and our things that matter, there is no harm about it. This will make bonds much better, it's fine. But I will go again with the time. It is not about conversing in order to make this positive thing, to take the time of the organization like hours and hours. <clears throat> and the other p part which is positive is like conversing about our business and knowing more of what you're doing. Because I believe that every single time we go to work, 
every person goes into his work from 9 to 5, working and doesn't know really what the other person does or even his interest. Bonding together and trusting in each other will make productivity much better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other thoughts, comments, insights? Trying to keep me fit. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Saber. Uh, just wanted to to get back to those two ideas. Uh, the fact that uh, conversation is great, conversation can be unproductive, or productive, or manage or unmanage, and so on and so forth. I mean, every ever and everybody can understand. And then there is a limit to that where you need to take it actions, okay, to 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 all those ideas that have been shared. And what I believe is that. Uh, at that limit, uh, it needs it needs to build pipelines to kind of you know direct all those ideas, select, filter, and 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 come up with the great ones. We we can qualify great, we can define great as as, as we like, but uh, we need we need first a job to be done or a topic uh, very specific, uh, very few words, and then to leave you know boundaries open to to know you know just conversing conversation and stuff between people come up with great ideas but still still you know stay at the level one of that idea it, it doesn't go deep enough uh, uh, until you know you you really write it down and you really break it down on, into what it is what are the criteria what are the parameters of that idea and, and then try to find relationship between ideas and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think that conversation is um, it's one tool. You know, it, d it doesn't do everything. And uh, let's do that. Yes. Um, so I, th I think you know, there's those everyday personal conversations that you have, which are important. But then you know, there are the group conversations, and maybe the more structured conversations that you have, wh whether it's in a cafe format or a brainstorming format or an after-action review, um, you know, those are all kind of conversational formats where we're, we're looking to achieve a particular, particular aim or goal. But uh, you want to say something here? Um, just a reflection after uh, the experience of the cafe. Uh, we in Egypt have the problem usually, you are hearing about knowledge management since quite uh, time, and being a consultant, I, I wonder whether this can be applicable in our society or not. We have a culture barrier of individualistic. People, they like to capture the information and it's quite hard to exchange the information or the experience. The reason, it's a quite long story. But when I practice this forum today, I found that it was relaxing. I gained experience from university. I gained experience from diplomatic. I heard the story about IBM and other colleagues. Uh, I came out that why not me, uh, we should encourage such forum to really overcome our culture for enhancing the knowledge. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to draw to a close now, unless there's any pressing things people want to say. Um, Clearly, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to, uh, to lunch. Um, <laughs> I, I think in our, in our British culture, it's a, it's a rather late lunch. We, we might call it tea. <laughs> um, but just a few words you know, in conclusion. Um, one, I always thoroughly enjoy these cafes. I always learn something. There's a few things in my head here that I'm, I'm taking away. Um, it's interesting one of the cafes in different cultures because there were always, there were always various cultural issues and, and various cultural perspectives as to how people engage in conversation and I've picked up on maybe one or two of them here uh, this afternoon. Well, what I was trying to do with the cafe as much as anything else is um, really just get across this whole idea of the importance and the role of conversation. And so I, th I think if you've taken just that away and hopefully this afternoon you know, has proved of value. But what I'd like to kind of just say, sort of finally, is, um, well one, take a look at my website. If you go to my website, I've got a lot of material about the Knowledge Cafe format. There are little videos and things that, that explain in more detail um, what it's about and how to run it. 
So you, know, you, you can actually run these cafes yourself quite easily within your own organisations. But the, the format that I've just described and, and what we've just done is just one kind of conversational format. There's another, there's another kind of uh, tool called the World Cafe that some of you may have heard about. But that's, that the process is a little bit different, it takes a little bit more effort. You need to have somebody, a host at every table, and someone there does actually take notes. And you might actually use that you know, for a different purpose. Other conversational formats, like after-action reviews, you know, at the end of a meeting or at the end of an event, where you say, um, you know, what was our objective? What went well? What didn't go so well? What have we learnt? You know, what would we do differently next time? That's a, a, that's, a, that's a conversation as well. I mean, that's a conversational cafe, if you will. A more structured version of what you've just experienced. But there's lots and lots of ways we can build more conversation into our organisations and as this uh, lady here just mentioned, you know, within our family lives as well. Um, I've got a wonderful book at home called The Devoicing of Society. I don't know what it's like here in, uh, in Egypt, but certainly, you know, in, uh, in my country, in North America, um, you know, in family life, there's a lot less conversation going on. You know, when I was a child, we sat down every evening for a family dinner. That doesn't happen anymore. You know, ready-made ready meals go into the microwave when people have their meals. The children and the parents have their meals at different times. So we're actually you know, losing that conversation that takes place in family life. So it's not just about business life, it's about our personal lives as well. But I'm talking far too much, I'm going to shut up. A great big thank you to all of you for just I don't know, having some good conversation. Thank you. <laughs>